Hey, what's going on YouTube? Tim here. Um, sorry about um, not carving, doing it, posting a video with the initial carving of this arm guard, which I mentioned I was going to do in the other video. Um, what ended up happening is I had the video and um, I recorded it, tried to post it, I thought it was posted, then I erased it off my phone because I um, needed room for something else, and then uh, realized that it hadn't been posted. So what I am going to do is do some uh, tooling and then um, I will uh, do another carving uh, later on in this video of something else I'm working on to get some uh, uh, footage of that. So let's um, get, get to it. So um, as I said the initial carving was done with my swivel knife here um, that's all done. Now the second step for me that I always do is to go through with a, a spoon. Um, you can get these various different places. I actually have had a couple and the best one that I found was at um, a, a craft store, like a run-of-the-mill craft store, like a, a Michael's, um, you know, Joanne Fabric, something like that. Um, this is I got this like a long time ago, and it's the best one. Maybe it's because I'm used to it, but this is my favorite, favorite one to use. So what I'll do is go back through and open all the lines that I previously carved with my swivel knife. And this... The point of this is to um, more easily get my edge beveler um, into the previously carved lines. Now you can skip this, a lot of people go straight to edge beveling, but for me this uh, step I've done it with and without, and this step tends to, well no it doesn't tend, it does help my work to look much more neater. And as you progress through your journey of leather crafting, you will see that all these small little things that you do makes the difference between something that you're like, wow, that came out really, really nice, or um, something that doesn't come out very well at all. Um, and you figure that out along the way. And you won't get these and tips from, you know, um, the commercial um, leather companies like they do for the leather element or, you know, the Springfield tutorials and stuff. You know, the, the Tandy and the Springfield stuff are, are great resources for beginning. But when you're kind of beyond that, you'll notice that all the information that you get is pretty much the same. So... It's kind of up to you to discover what works best for you and that, then to go on like more um, detail-oriented crafters like Bruce Cheney or Don Gonzalez, um, people like that. Because sometimes they even inadvertently give you some great tips that, um, you know, they just kind of say it in passing and you're like, you know, um, that really, really does work really, really well. Um, like with Don Gonzalez, he um, I do a little like uh, rating work. Like here's um, a, a wallet I just made, um, and I do a little edge braiding here and there on stuff. Um, as you can see here, got a round braid, um, and did some. I forgot what this one's called here, but uh, what type of braid this is. But anyways, um, what he did in a video is that he used. Um, uh, a blade to kind of skive a little bit to loosen up the the, the uh, leather thong and he also did uh, condition the leather um, thong before or after or previous before he did the any of the braiding and actually that works very very well to be able to kind of um, you know get the um, piece of leather to sit down better it's just um, uh, it's a better method you know and it's all in the prep so this is all in the prep for um, doing some tooling. All right. 
Now, when I'm done this, um, I don't put it away because I, I do use it for detail work. This is also great for detail work. Um, so getting a spoon is something that um, you should invest in if you're thinking about doing any um, carving stuff. If you're doing the stamping or just, you know, building a, what's that? a basic wallet, you know, like this, you don't need a spoon. Uh, because this is done by stamp and everything else is just, uh, you know, your basic crafting. But if you're getting into like the more artsy side of leather work, you definitely shouldn't be getting a spoon. All right, so edge beveling and mallets and hammers. All right, so you can get a whole different array of edge bevelers. Now for me, um, I mainly use these two. This one is more expensive. This is, um, you know, the Craft Pro, Craft Tool Pro series. This was, again, a generic one, but I actually like the way this looks. But I'll, what, I, what I usually do is I go through with this first, um, and I actually use this in more tight spots, and then I'll go around with this um, to make everything um, kind of come together. Um, I don't use a mallet. Um, I actually prefer using wooden hammers. Um, I have a whole mess of them, but what I like doing, because anybody, any of you out there who have, who use uh, wooden hammers know that um, after a while um, they can get warped and even um, like the little bits of uh, wood starts to come off when you're using it. So um, I like to line or, or cover the tips with a little piece of leather. Um, and then even when that gets worn out, you can just pop it off, sand this down, put a new one on. Um, this is one I made. Um, and kind of have a little grip there when I do a little more gentle type work. All right. So people like to use also um, uh, something to hold. their work down to prevent it from shifting while they're doing their edge beveling and um, sometimes I will do that depending on how um, much shifting my work is doing but another tip you can um, kinda wet the bottom this as long as you have like marble or granite to work on and that kind of gives it some traction and it won't shift as much. So with this initial pass um, I'm not too worried about it because as you can see right now, well, if I can focus, it's looking pretty choppy. The edge beveling is looking pretty choppy. Um, but what ends up happening is I go back through with um, my other edge beveler and it cleans everything right up. And it actually gives it a more rich texture. Um, this gives it a more um, subtle texture, but actually a very um, rich shadow, which I enjoy. Um, and I actually will use this on, on more uh, like uh, detailed parts of um, some figure carving. But um, uh, let me uh, finish this up with this pass and I'll show you how it comes together with uh, my bigger one here. All right, so another tip that I would give you is making sure that you have a um, acceptable amount of moisture content and that goes with um, you know carving as well as stamping. Now um, 
if you have this too wet, it'll get mushy. If it's too dry, um, it'll, the impressions won't look right. And again, that's something that you'll have to figure out in time. Kind of just play with a little bit and you'll see which um, comes out the best. So I'm going to go ahead and again, you can see this doesn't look great. It's very choppy, um, but um, that's my initial pass. I always do at least two passes, sometimes three. And um, it, 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 it takes time, but it's definitely worth um, doing it that way, in my opinion. I feel like the work comes out a lot neater. Now with this one, I'm making sure that I am a little more careful of being consistent in the um, pressure that I'm putting on each hit and the um, way it's blended from one strike to the other. As you can see, shadowing is getting darker, um, and the texturing is pretty cool. Um, let's see. So I might be running out of space again. I gotta be mindful of that. But what I'll do. I'll finish this up and hopefully I'll have enough room to do um, a quick carving. All right, well, um, hopefully you can see the difference. I notice the, I always can. Um, it's actually getting a little dry right here, so I'm going to hit it with a sponge. I'm going to set it aside um, and pull out uh, the um, carving so I can get a little of that on this video as well. Hang on. All right, so here's the carving I'm going to do. You know how it's transferred. I already showed you how to do that. Um, this is actually going to be part of a, um, a dog treat and waste uh, bag um, hip pouch. Um, this will be sewn on like so. This will be on here. It will be a toggle um, system. And then you'll be able to put your you know, um, uh, belt through here. And I might even do like a, a snap release too. Um, we'll see. But um, this is going to be kind of just like a prototypical piece to, sh to, to advertise to people. As you can see, um, there's a pretty nasty scar right here. So, you know, I'll wear this to the dog park and stuff and hopefully get people interested in wanting to get one. All right. So apologize if the video cuts off, but uh, here I go. And this actually is um, modeled after my dog, which if you saw the video from yesterday, you saw her there um, being a pain in my butt. She's actually over there on the floor chewing on a piece of my leather. Luckily it's scrap or I'd be flipping out on her. And um, this is an original drawing that I did. And hopefully it doesn't sound annoying when I say that all the time, but um, um, I can't stress enough that um, just get your pencil out, you know, do some sketching. Um, 
you know, when you're bored, um, when you're motivated, when you're inspired. And always be on the lookout for, you know, things in your life that, you know, may make you want to um, create. Um, don't feel like you can't borrow ideas from people because artists are great thieves. They're always taking other people's ideas, you know, but taking an idea and making it yours is what makes it art. And this is my opinion, um, but... I truly believe that because where would we be if we couldn't imitate? You know, where do you think the freaking saying that art imitates life comes from? All right. Just about done here. This is about a, I don't know, six ounce veg tan and it's um, very easy to carve so actually I'm kind of going real easy on this because I don't want to make everything too deep. Well there you go. Um, just in the nick of time, my thing is blinking. Alright, hopefully you enjoyed it. Appreciate your creativity. Peace.